Ezekiel 18. I want to make a note. This is Old Testament. This is on the other side of Calvary. There are no Christians. There's no one atonement of one sacrifice by God, his son. This is under the law. You got that? The word of the Lord came unto me again saying, What mean ye that you use this proverb? Now we just did a proverb 17. Concern the land of Israel, saying, Now this is what Israel is saying. The fathers have eaten sour grapes. I've had those. And the children's teeth are set on edge. So with the preaching of Jeremiah and Ezekiel, the children of Israel got to the point, well, why should we suffer if it's our fathers? Well, we don't need to run to the Pauline epistle because Pauline epistles have not been written yet. We can run to Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 20, for there is not a just man on the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. It's not that the fathers have sinned and the children are suffering. They're all sinning. Wicked and grotesque, vile abominations recorded by Jeremiah and Ezekiel. As I live, there's that oath of God again. Save the Lord God. Ye shall not have an occasion anymore to use this proverb in Israel. God's like, knock it off. Now look at verse 4. A very bold statement. Behold, all souls are mine. So what do you do when somebody says, well, I'll sell my soul out to the devil? You can't. God made man. God breathed into man. He became a, a living man. That eternal soul belongs to God and you reject God and what he says how to do his salvation in the, in the period of what salvation is for where you are living. God will cast that soul into hell. As the soul of the father, going back to the, the proverb, so also the soul of the son is mine. All right. Oh, the father's eating sour grapes. And the soul that sinneth, Solomon says, Paul says, there is, for all have sinned and come short the glory of God. It shall die. Well, look at that. Look, look, at, Ro look at Romans. The wages of sin is death. Paul quotes from the Old Testament. Because he didn't have the New Testament until he wrote most of the New Testament. Now, we're going to go into different categories throughout this chapter. And I hope we can finish the chapter. Because it, it's a chapter that needs to be together. So, let me just go on. But, okay, God's going to give us some examples. If a man be just... And do that which is lawful and right. Has not eaten upon the mountains. That's the high places. That's They're having food on the high places to the idols. Neither had lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel. Notice house of Israel it is a reference to belongs to the idols. Which shouldn't be. Neither has defiled his neighbor's wife. Adultery. Neither has come near to a menstruous woman. It doesn't say wife. It just says woman. That was forbidden in the law too. A woman who has had who was in her cycle was considered unclean, and anything that she touches was unclean. Well, evidently, God's speaking. But we're talking about the judge. He doesn't do anything. Has not oppressed any. 
but has restored the debt or his pledge. And, uh, and according to the law, you couldn't keep that pledge overnight. This guy's obeying the law. Notice the works, 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 works. That's not today. Has spoiled none by violence. Has given his bread to the hungry. Let's you liberal today. Well, we give to charity, we do this, we do that, we do. That's not our salvation today. That's under the law. And has covered the naked with a garment. He has not given forth upon usury, fellow Jew, under the law. Neither has taken any increase. That he has drawn his hand from iniquity, he's doing right. And has executed true judgment between man and man. And has walked in my statutes of the law, and has kept my judgments of the law. And deal truly, he is just. That's Old Testament. That's not Christian today, salvation. You know, there, there was one man that came up to Jesus. Jesus said, you know, thou shalt honor thy mother and father, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou he says, all these I kept from my youth up. <laughs> that's, that's a hard thing. That's going to be the salvation and belief in Jesus Christ in the millennium. I mean, not the millennium, the tribulation. He is just. I'm glad I'm not under the law. I'm glad I'm under the dispensation of grace by Jesus Christ alone. He shall surely live, save the Lord God. All right, that's the just guy. That's the one who's doing right. Under the law. If he beget a son, all right, if he has a son, the, the parable, you know, father eats the son of grapes and so Well, God starts off with a good man. If he beget a son who's a robber and shed his blood, a murderer, and does like and doeth like to any one of these things. And that doeth not any of those duties, but even has eaten upon the mountains, idolatry, high places, and defiled his neighbor's wife, adultery. He has oppressed the poor and needy, has spoiled by violence. He's taken things... I wouldn't say they didn't have guns back there. Taking things at knife point. By threat. By extortion. And has not restored the pledge. He's everything his father's not. And has lifted up his eyes to the idols. And has committed an abomination. Has given forth the usury. Violation. This is all violation of the law. And has taken increase. Shall he then live? Notice all the works. 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 He shall not live. He has done all these abominations. He ought to have been put to death by the law. The law and the violations of what he this man has done. He is supposed to put him in capital punishment. That's what it means. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon his head. Accountability. You wonder if Israel's gotten to the point, Jews got to the point that the criminals such as this, are they putting them to death? Are they stoning them? I don't think so. Because one of the things to be stoning the fellow Jew was idolatry and it's rampant in Judah. So God's pointing out, hey, listen, the crimes that is going on, how come they're living? How come you're living? Verse 14, now, lo, if he beget a son that sees all his father's sins, which he has done, 
And there's a king, I forget his name, but, you know, he saw what his father did, and he did right. Some of the kings did that. Some of the kings saw the good of their father and did wrong. And considereth and doeth not such like. That has not eaten upon the mountains. Now notice the works again. Again, this is not having a picnic with your family on the mountains. This is idolatry. This is high places. You know, like, there's religions that they, they go about. Uh, I'm trying to think of the word right now. So, so I was going to say it, the word escapes my mouth. Uh, pilgrimages. You know, they go up to, and then, you know, the, the, the joke, you know, they climb this big mountain to that guru. Neither has lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, has not defiled his neighbor's wife, adultery. Neither has knows the Ten Commandments. Neither has oppressed any, has not withholding the pledge. Neither has spoiled by violence. See, we're going to the grandchild now. And has given his bread to the hungry, works. And has covered the naked with garments, works. That has taken off his hand from the poor, works. Has not received usury, nor increase, works. Has executed my judgment, works, and the law. And walked in my statutes, the law. He shall not die for the iniquity of his father, we just mentioned. The, the parable we started off in, in chapter 18. He shall surely live. So don't say, well, you know, the father's eating the sour grapes and the children. No, no, God says, no, that ain't the case. And I brought it down to a grandchild. As for the father, because he cruelly oppressed, spoiled his brother, that would be a fellow Jew, by violence, and did that which is not good among his people, Jews, Lo, even he shall die in his iniquity. Yet, say ye, why? <laughs> Did you understand what we read? Was there anything too hard for the Old Testament to read what you do, what we just read? That if a man's in wickedness and, and iniquity, he's going to die in his sin and accountability. If a man does right and, and, and lives by God, he's, he's going to live. And the Jews come back to say, why? They don't get it. Does not the son bear iniquity for the father? When the son has done that which is lawful and right and has kept all my statue and has done them, he shall surely live. He ain't going to pay for his father. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. My children are not going to have to give an account for my sin. As I will not have to give an account for their sin. But oh brother, I got enough to worry about with God with my sin. <laughs> the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. That proverb. The Jews are saying, well, you know, the children pay for the fathers. No, no, no. You're sinning just as much as your father. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wicked of the the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Every man has a thing. Hey, listen, my dad is wicked and vile. I don't have to be like that. My dad is righteous and doing like that. Well, I'm gonna go the other way. You have a free will choice, even under the law. Now I know I, I said a four-letter bad word. That there is a free will under the law. There it is. But, <laughs> okay, verse 21. If the wicked, alright, he's wicked, will turn from his sins, look at the repentance. 
And there are churches today that don't preach and don't teach repentance. And we are seeing repentance even in the law. If the wicked will turn from his sins that he committed and keep all my statutes, works, and do that which is lawful and right, works, he shall surely live and shall not die. There is still hope for a wicked, for a wicked person in the law. He's got to repent, and he's got to turn away. And the law says you must make restitution. <clears throat> All his transgressions that he committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. Notice it doesn't say forgiven. They're not forgiven to the Lamb of God sheds his blood. In righteousness that he does, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God? Is God happy to, when they get stoned? Is God happy? When, and not that they should return repentance, repentance. From his ways and live. God wants repentance. He does not want judgment. But if you will not do right. You will not repent. God must bring judgment. But God's not in pleasure. But when the righteous. Okay here we go another one. When the righteous turn away from his righteousness. Here's a man doing right. And committeth iniquity. And doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth. <laughs> then he shall, shall he live. All his righteousness that he has done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he is trespassed. And in his sin that he sinned. In them shall he die. It's like the, the man that was wicked and repented. God, don't mention those sins. Here's a righteous man that goes into wickedness. You better mention them. And there is a thing for the Christian, uh, 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 Second John, I think it is. There are possible. There are some sins that Christians can do. They can lose a reward or inheritance. But when I confess my sins and God is faithful and just to forgive me my sins and cleanse me, God, they're forgiven, they're forgotten. On the Old Testament, they're not forgiven and forgotten again to the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world upon Calvary's cross. And as far as a nation in Israel as a corporate body of people, that's not going to happen until they get the new heart and God cleanses them at the second advent. But we're talking about individuals. Under the law. Now in 24 verses. Did we miss. Anybody. We had the man that did right. Did right. Did right. We had the man that did wrong. That did wrong. That did wrong. We had the man that did wrong. Repented. And got right. And we got the righteous man that did right, turned to the wrong, and continued the wrong. Yet ye say, here's what Israel says, the way of the Lord is not equal. What was so unequal? Righteous man will get a righteous reward. The wicked man will get a wicked nothing. Well, what condition is Judah in? They're in wickedness. And they know it. Hear now, O house of Israel. Notice how God's directing them all. Is not my way equal? 
And are not your ways unequal? You know, they were allowing people under the law who committed violent crimes. They were allowing them to live, like in America. And the people cry, well, we don't want to execute them. We want to let Barabbas go and, and kill the good guy. Sound familiar? Oh, what's the Bible expression? There's nothing new under the sun. When a right... Okay, and God's going... Okay, here we go again. When a righteous man turneth away repentance from his righteousness... Oh, here's a reversal of repentance. Here's a man that's done right going wrong and committed adultery, uh, adultery committed iniquity and dieth in them. He dies in his sin. For his iniquity that he doeth shall he die. What's wrong with that? Israel don't like that. Why? Because they're guilty. They want God to justify their sins, and that's what they want today. Again, when the wicked man turns away from his wickedness, repentance, that he has committed, he's going to get right, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul. Notice he shall save his soul. I don't save my soul. It ain't my salvation. It's the salvation of God through Jesus Christ. We are under the law. He shall save his soul alive. By what? Works, works, works. Verse 26, the righteous man that turns to his iniquity. Well, what is his death? Works, works, works. Because he considereth and turns away from his transgressions that he has committed, he shall surely live and shall not die. There is no capital punishment. Yet, <laughs> saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal, O house of Israel. Are not my ways equal? Are not your ways? They don't like God's plan. And we, what's wrong? What's wrong with what we read? Let's put it like this: A man steps up to a judge, and he has stolen. And the judge orders that man a thief's sentence. A man walks up to the judge. He's charged with theft. And he's not guilty. And the judge sets him free. That's what we just read in a nutshell. Israel said, that's not fair. Now, how do you know it's so? What about Jesus and Barabbas? Barabbas was in insur insurrection. He, I believe he, they said he murdered somebody. And I think he was a thief. Jesus was God. He was innocent. There was I find no fault in him four times. Who got the execution that day? Ezekiel 18, we're running all the way up to the day before Pilate. And Barabbas and Jesus. And what did the Jews say? Ezekiel 18. Let the madman go and, and set the good man on the cross. I don't like the Old Testament. It's boring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. Oh yeah, he's going to judge all those Jews during Jesus' time. Everyone according to his ways. Ooh, you in trouble. Thank God I'm under grace. Thank God I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am not going to get my just desserts by God. Never. Being judged by God or everyone according to his way, that, that ought to make you shake in your boots. And if you're not wearing boots, go get some boots on and shake in them. Say if the Lord God, repent! Oh, what do you do with modern churches with that one? You didn't get the word repent? Turn yourselves! You didn't get that? From your transgressions, how much clearer should it be? Let's get a modern Bible and erase it. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. And there was a man who did not obey my words, did not do my words, were, and he built his house upon the beach, and the storms came, and the winds blew, and there was great ruin. Cast away from all your transgressions. Cast away. Get away. To repent. Turn yourself. Whereby ye have transgressed. And make you a new heart, that's millennium, and a new spirit, that's millennium. Why will you die? Look at that corporate, O house of Israel. That brings you right up to the time of Jesus Christ and, and the church age, corporate. Until you get that new heart, that new spirit, and the forgiveness of God. Second advent, millennium. Corporate Israel, they're not going to get saved under church aid. But individual Jews can get saved. God's going to deal corporately with Israel during the tribulation period as a punishment, as a spanking. And God's going to redeem corporate Israel at the second advent, millennial, and into the eternal life. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth. God has no pleasure of a man going into hell. You went against God in his way. It's not God that throws you into hell. It's your rejection of what God said to do. You cast yourself into hell. The Bible says God's long-suffering that he's not willing that any should perish. That's the New Testament version of what we just read in Ezekiel. Get it? Ready? One last time. Say it the Lord God, wherefore turn yourselves repentance. And if you are in a church today that does not preach, does not teach, and does not instruct one to repent, go out the doors and don't enter that church no more. And then he says, and live, live, Ye, I've repented and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to live. 